Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is down 20. NASDAQ's up 52. S&Ps are up 8. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Fred Ernest. Fred is the president and CEO of Vista Gold. Uh, I happen to own Vista Gold. Vista Gold uh, is building shareholder value with one of Australia's largest and most advanced undeveloped gold projects. There's no doubt about that, man. Welcome back, Fred. How you doing? Very well, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Well, you know, I saw the um, the news release you put out on May 25th. So tell us a little bit about that news release. Yeah, really quickly, uh, you know, we uh, we have an agreement with the Northern Territory government whereby they have retained the uh, the environmental liability for the uh, project site up until the point in time that we make a definitive investment decision. Uh, that was uh, renewed. Uh, that that agreement is now valid through uh, through uh, the end of the year 2029, and uh, we're really excited about it. I, I think it's a demonstration of the outstanding relationship that we have with the Northern Territory government. No, I can see that. And I can see the context of when you're actually negotiating with other companies. I I, I expect that's really important, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, just having having runway, knowing that there's, uh, you know, the, the, the comfort zone of being able to advance the project, go through the studies that need to be uh, undertaken without having the government, you know, breathing down our back uh, is certainly a huge advantage for companies that would be looking to partner with us uh, on Mount Todd. Sure. Now, Fred, does this have to do with that? You know, at one time, you know, this was a, a mine, right? And then, so is there more? Is there water in the mine? What does this have to do with? Does this have to do with a legacy issue from a long time ago? Absolutely. Um, you know, it, when when you look at the pictures of of the mine site, you see that there's a, and we have them up right now. Facility, the waste rock dump. You know, these things. I uh, see. We get a lot of water and, and uh, you know, the government looks at it from the point of view that these are things that need to be reclaimed. We look at it as, as you know, this is infrastructure and things that we'll be able to utilize. So, uh, and, and, and to, to reclaim them uh, as part of the mining operation will be part of our bond. So the government maintaining that, that liability up until the point in time that the decision made to develop the project is a tremendous advantage to us. Wow, that is really cool, because when I read that, I really didn't get that. I, I got the aspect of, I thought it had something to do with the licensing, that you have that much more time in order to make a deal with someone else. So that's a lot bigger than that. That is really cool. So, it's, it's both, yeah, but it, it is. Okay. It's, it's, it's really big. Yeah. So let's talk about the mine. I have the, I have the, the presentation, because I know you come out with another presentation on the first and so i have your presentation up here i mean this is there's a lot of infrastructure here fred there's a tremendous amount of infrastructure you know we mentioned the tailing storage facility it has capacity for the first 80 million tons that's roughly a third of the reserves of the project there's paved roads to the site um, power lines a natural gas pipeline and we plan to use that that, that pipeline to generate power uh, with uh, with our own power plant allowing us to, to generate power for somewhere between um, a, a quarter and a third of the cost of buying it from the grid. You know, it's, there's there's just many things that were built and paid for by the previous owners and operators of the project that we're able to take advantage of that give us, you know, cost advantages and time advantages. We just don't have to take the time to build some of these things. Yes. And, you know, the bottom line is, is that I guess when we're talking about when this mine was operating versus where we are now, I mean, we have gold that's running at 1979. I suspect when, you know, when you guys had come into this project, I, I believe gold was like at the lows, right? It was like 280 to 320 or something, right? The the mine the mine operated in the in the mid nineteen nineties. It shut down in nineteen ninety seven. Okay. Operated again for a year in two thousand. In that period of time, the gold price was in the range of at a low two sixty. Yeah. At a high, you know, three hundred and eighty. I mean, we're in a tremendously different environment today than what those operators faced in their day. You know, it's amazing, Fred and folks. I started the gold report um, in 90, 98, I think. 
and Merrill Lynch had one of the best commodity desk and they they were shutting it down whenever with gold was 282 because uh, I got into a 252 but it's so weird that that happens a lot Merrill Lynch had one of the best commodity desks in, in Europe they shut it down they they opened it back up like six years ago but it's like it, it's it's wild that that's what does happen at severe lows right that you know it's like okay I'm gonna throw in the towel yeah it happens it happens a lot Tom it happens in a lot of industries uh you know, I, it's really a credit to those who are persistent yes. and have the, the, the foresight to buy things when they're cheap and to buy things when nobody else wants them and to hold on to them because they're the people that actually realize the tremendous value creation. No, I agree. I, I, someone told me a quote, and I'm sure most of us know it. You make money buying at the lows. That's when you, it's not that the selling. It's really the making the money, buying right, right? I mean, that's what it comes down to. So that we have the project now where, you know, at the 1979, things are still tight, you know, interest rate wise. But it's going to get intriguing here, Fred, because, you know, the way that the, the Fed fund rate is looking right now is that we won't go up in rates in June. And, you know, we'll see what happens in, you know, the rest of the year. But I'm sure that that's another maybe um, more wind at your back if, in fact, these rates have topped out. Would that be correct? Or the yeah, rates we, have we believe so. Okay. We believe so, Tom. And, and, you know, the other interesting thing is that the gold price typically lags some of the other indicators. Yes. And while we have a really good gold price today, we believe that there's strong reason to believe that in, in the coming year, two years, three years, that we're going to see tremendous increase in the gold price which will drive considerable value creation for Vista shareholders. No, I can see it because what happens, folks, is this, is that when the rates top out, it doesn't mean inflation's topping out. So that's when everyone's no. going, to, going to gold. That's, they, they, they don't have much choice at this time, Fred. We had a couple banks go down, right? And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, we got to bring things a little bit slower, you know? So it, it's really intriguing. Um, and so they, I'm, I'm sure you're still out there, you know, looking at all these different um, companies uh, looking at this project. Yes. You know, there, there are companies that are still undertaking due diligence. Uh, we continue to, to knock on doors to sign confidentiality agreements. Uh, and we'll, we'll see where this, we'll see where this goes. I love it. Well, listen, it's always a pleasure, Fred. You have a great one, safe one. We look, I look forward to having you on again. All, all the best, Tom. Thanks, Fred. Be safe. Have a great one. Have a safe Bye one. Then. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back.